camera crew. This is going to be a full-on shark frenzy. So I want you guys either here or on the back wall. Don't be free swimming, because there's going to be sharks attacking from all directions. So if we don't get this off, this shark will die. I, I think our chances of success are extremely low. So many things could go wrong. Trying to save the shark is an unexpected risk for us. Um, and it's probably going to be the most dangerous thing we do on the whole trip, because you're trying to snag a shark around the neck. We're not catching the tail. With all our other animals, we catch them by the tail, and you're taking the sense of propulsion away. So once they can't swim, that's it. Now we go to the big head. If the packing tape fails to snap, the shark becomes tethered to the reef. The fishing line transforms into 30 foot of razor wire. This thing's caught around the neck. So as soon as I snag it, that shark's going to take off at a million miles an hour. That shark could go spinning around, could wrap around us, could cut straight through our limbs, you know, like a hot knife through butter. So we've got no idea what's going to happen once I snag the shark. The team are ready to launch their rescue operation. A medic is standing by. An evacuation plan is established. Not only is there a problem getting them back to the boat, but obviously if you've then got someone bleeding in the water, sharks are going to go from the tuna head to where all the blood is. You've got to be super safe here, because we're a long way from help if something does go wrong. The team have to dive as light as possible. They're forced to ditch their underwater communication units. They must rely on hand signals. They're in luck. The injured shark is still in the area. Now, they just need to get its attention. A crate of tuna pieces is locked away until just the right moment. We put the crate into the position, and then I got everyone to back off. I wanted all the film crew and all the support crew behind me because when I snagged that shark, I had no idea which direction it was going to go. Once everyone was in position, I popped the crate open and I put a few fish heads down in amongst the reef. And it was just a matter of just waiting for the animals to come in close. And they don't have to wait very long. So the white tips moved in first, and as soon as they started feeding on them and thrashing around and the scent went in the air, then it was like ringing the dinner bell. As the shark feeding frenzy erupts underwater, the topside crew prepare for the worst. Within seconds, the sea is a vision of blood-filled bedlam. Richard hunts for the shark, being choked to death by a hoop of packing tape. You can't even describe it. It's just chaos trying to look for one shark out of 30. Suddenly, Richard sees the shark with the tape digging into its gills. He'll only have one shot to get the hook in and snag the tape off. At that point, I don't know who was more surprised, the shark or I was. Incredibly, Richard manages to snag the animal. As it went past, I got the hook up and just traveled down the side of the shark's body, you know, a couple of inches just in front of the, um, of the plastic. And then I pushed it into the body and got a secure lock onto the plastic. But during the frenzied chaos, a fatal flaw. I was trying to hang on to it to try and pull the plastic off and the power of that animal, unbelievable. And the shark just took off. I mean, that thing just was like a bat out of hell. That cord had an 800 pound braking strain and it just snapped and my heart just sank. The plan has failed at the last second. The team has underestimated the shark's immense power. The animal disappears down the shelf into the darkness. <laughs> 